And then let's go ahead and begin in child's pose, please. So you'll bring your hips back toward your heels and your forehead towards the floor. Hi, David. I'm glad you made it. And as you begin to settle into your mat and find that quietness and that stillness, uh, begin to notice where your body lands in it today. So especially for many of us, quarantine has meant um, smaller spaces, right? And trying to be more efficient and confined. And that serves a purpose, certainly, in this time. But when we come onto our yoga mat, it really is an opportunity to explore that vastness that we all embody. And really how much opportunity exists when you come onto your mat and when you close your eyes. So as you land in child pose this evening and this afternoon, start making choices that really reflect what you not only feel, but also perhaps what you desire. So maybe that looks like separating your knees a bit wider than normal, walking your arms back behind you with the palms facing up. And slowly beginning to roll your forehead on the floor, finding a little bit of movement, finding a bit of fluidity. And in that journey, perhaps even beginning to find space. And of course, I can hear and see some of you already beginning to breathe audibly and fully. And that plays a really big role in this as well. And for the next 58 minutes or so, this is our emphasis, is finding the way of breathing that reflects our feeling in the moment. And that if ever you become uh, strained or this breath becomes too monitored or strained or held, you come right back here to child's pose. You come right back to your breath. And then wherever you are with your breath, let's go ahead and begin the practice all together by exhaling completely empty, 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 empty. And then greet that with a full exaggerated inhale. So expand the belly, spread the ribs, hold it at the top. And exhale, H -A. Ah, let it go. Yeah. And then if the arms aren't already there, go ahead and begin to tent up onto all 10 fingers, almost like you had little glasses underneath the palms, feeling a gentle stretch above the wrist, the elbows lift up off the floor. And then slowly begin to walk your fingertips all the way to the right side of your mat. Gently nudge your hips over to the left and use your breath to guide open left side body, fanning open the ribs. Eyes are closed, jaws soft. Take a deep, deep, deep inhale and a complete exhale. Finding that weight in all 10 fingertips, gently begin to walk your fingers through center of your mat and then all the way over to left side of the mat. <sighs> Shifting your hips over to the right. And again, using that breath, almost like flower petals to peel open right ribs, right lungs. Take that deep, exaggerated breath. Take up space within it. And exhale, let it go. And then walk your hands back to the center of your mat. Separate your hands a good shoulder width distance. And then inhale, come up into tabletop. Stack your shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. And immediately find an undulation of the spine into cat-cow. So inhale, tilt the tailbone, chin up towards the ceiling, open the throat. Exhale, contract the navel in, pull, pull tail and chin in towards the center of the body. And find your rhythm. So inhale, drop the belly down, stretch open the throat, push into your shins. Exhale, pull the navel in, find that compression, try to stretch open back side body. And do that a few times on your own. Inhale, I move. Exhale, I move. 
And if you can do so, I encourage you to close the eyes. Okay, and if you can find a bit more of a um, explorative type notion, maybe you begin to sway the hips or roll out the neck or the shoulders or let this from the very beginning of the practice, yeah, be expressive and be sensual in the way that your senses dominate what you do. Right? I'm going to make suggestions throughout the class, but let them be suggestions. Whatever way you're moving, it's because that's the way your body asks you to do. Really, really nice. And then slowly, we're going to transition ourselves into something like a downward facing dog. So keeping that kind of fluidity in the spine of exploration and playfulness in the breath, curl your toes under, press your hips up high and continue that movement. Right, this undulation and inversion now it creates a different opportunity. So as you pedal out the feet, maybe it becomes more apparent that the upper body needs movement. So bending the elbows or shimming out the shoulders, nodding the head, yes, no. Again, very simple, safe, um, not too defined motion right now. So close the eyes okay? and feel for that place that you want to move from and move into the place that you want to experience right now. Yeah, and then slowly over the course of the next few breaths, we'll become very specific in our downward facing dog shape. So let's go ahead and come into an upper push up. Shift your shoulders over your wrists, hips up in line with the shoulders, and toes directly underneath the heels. So for most of us, right, it gets a little bit of a, you start feeling a sensation at the bottom of the feet. So stretching the heels forward, contract the top of the thighs so you're pulling up on the knees. Look down at your fingers. Try to maximize contact between your palm, your body, and the mat. So spread your fingers super wide. Index fingers facing forward. Okay, take a deep inhale. Keep your wrists and toes where they are. Exhale, hips high, heels low, down dog. And as you soften behind the knees to take some of the weight out of the ankles, imagine softening, melting your heart back towards your thighs. And then wherever you are, exhale completely. Take a deep, exaggerated inhale, push into your thumbs, lengthen to the spine. Exhale, let it go, H-A. <sighs> yeah. Right. And then keeping the hands as they are on your inhale, simply glide the right leg up and back. You can spread your toes or point them. So often our feet get confined to shoes, socks, or slippers, right? but our feet can be just as expressive as our hands. So allow that creativity to ooze from the toes down through the fingertips. Take a deep inhale, lift the leg a little higher. Exhale, roll open the hip, bend your knee, and whatever it is. And you know, we might appear to be symmetrical, they, that idea, that superficiality of what a symmetry looks like in the human body, but we're not, right? Our organs, if you look inside, we're incredibly lopsided. So move with what the right side asks you to move okay, and feel your way through it very consciously. Pro keep pushing into your thumbs and then inhale, lengthen the right leg up and back. Exhale, gently place the foot all the way forward in between your palms. Drop your back knee down onto the floor, untuck your back toes, and interlock all 10 fingers on that right quad just behind the knee. So right here, you have a lot of choices. The motion or the shape is a little bit more complex, so we take our time and we feel our way through it. We keep pushing into the back top of our back foot. We keep igniting that left side body so that the left front body can soften. If you're okay here, maybe you begin to drop the hips forward. If this still feels pretty accessible, you wanna explore more, begin to straighten the arms, puff the chin and chest up towards the sky, and then decide. You can interlock the fingers behind the nape of the neck, spreading the elbows wide. You can interlock the fingers above you, finding a deeper back bend, or maybe just release the arms back down towards the floor. Whatever choice you're making, the breath is full, it's deep. We take a sweet inhale right to that sweet spot. And then exhale, take your time.
Place your hands back down to frame your front foot. Untuck the back toes. Gently lift the left leg up. Inhale, three-legged downward facing dog. And then slowly you'll release the right leg down. And you'll notice the difference between your right and left side. Enjoy it. Inhale, left leg up. Again, flex or point or rotate or however you want to explore. Inhale, lengthen that leg along. And then exhale, roll it open. Bend the knee or find some sort of playfulness. Right? That accurately reflects what your body can do. Get curious, especially if you're just now beginning to develop a home practice. That's all yoga at home is about, right? It's about getting curious. It's about being willing to explore. And what else did you set aside time for? Keep it moving. And then inhale, lift the left leg up, up, up. And then exhale, gently sweep it all the way forward. Step that foot in between your palms. Drop your back knee down, untuck the back foot, and interlock all 10 fingers. On that quad just below the knee. And again, finding that um, opportunity of opposition. Right? So as we push down into the top of our back foot, as we squeeze that right butt cheek, suddenly that right hip flexor is allowed to soften, right? Because it has support from behind. If you're okay here and you want to begin exploring, go for it. Yeah, dropping the hips down, lifting the arms up. Exactly. So beautiful, Phil. Right, spreading the elbows wide, using your shoulder blades to puff up your chest, no matter where you are. So continuously finding space to breathe, to open. Take a full inhale here. And then exhale, release both hands down. Lift up on your back knee by untucking the back toes. And then inhale, lift the left leg back up into three-legged down dog. Swirl it around a little bit if that feels good. And then gently release the left foot all the way to the floor. Really nice. And then deeply bend your knees, exaggerate the bend. Try to stretch open the bottoms of your feet as you do so, lowering the hips almost to the ankles. And then take tiny steps all the way to the front of your mat, please. All the way up, all the way up, yes. And then separate your feet about two of your own fists width. This is your hip bones distance. So all 10 toes face forward, thumbs are touching, pinkies can touch the big toes. And then inhale into a halfway lift, get a flat back, Firm core, weight slightly forward into the balls of the feet, and chin only lifted as much as you can find extension through that neck spine. Take one more full inhale, get a little bit longer, pull the belly in. Exhale, release, ragdoll forward. And then bending the knees a fraction, you decide whether to cup the elbows, interlock the fingers behind the nape of the neck or the back. Yeah, you can slightly bounce. Maybe you sway from side to side. But noticing what little effort is required to feel a sweetness or a sensation. Exhale, release the hands down. On an inhale, sweep the arms up all the way to come to standing. Hands shoulder width distance, palms face one another. More than likely your first Tadasana of the day. And then once you get there, close your eyes because this is a simple and safe motion you've done so many times, you're standing, right? But when you come into yoga, it's that cultivation of awareness and sensitivity. So notice where the weight falls between your feet. And then move to find an evenness, a centeredness. Maybe it's rolling to the outside edges of the feet, maybe all the way forward into the balls or all the way into the heels. Maybe it's just trying to pick your toes up spreading them as wide and long as I can before placing each one back down. Pull up on the knees. Belly is contracted, not to suppress anything, but instead to allow for more buoyancy in the ribs. So with the eyes closed, can you visualize every inhale, you get longer through low ribs all the way to index fingers? And every exhale, you soften into that newfound space. You sink into the weight and strength of your thighs. If your eyes are still closed, I invite you to gently glance up in between your palms. 
On an inhale, push your hips forward, draw the arms back for a gentle back bend. On your exhale, lengthen all the way forward, forward fold. Yeah. Really nice. We're gonna do that three more times on your own. So find your inhale, glide the arms up, continue to inhale as you press your hips forward, as you stretch your heart high, and as you exhale, you're gonna release. Yeah, and you find your own movement. Every inhale, you get a little bit longer, a little bit taller, more stable in the feet. And every exhale, you work on surrender. Right? Allow gravity to help you. One more time. Deepest breath of your day so far. Hips forward, chest open. So beautiful, Lord. And then release. Really nice. Inhale back into a halfway lift. Flat back, firm core, please. Exhale, release both hands down to the floor. Step both of your feet back. Let's revisit that upper push-up plank. So yoga to the people, are all flow, our flow sequences consist of this chaturanga flow. We do it many, many times. If ever it becomes um, overwhelming or it shortens the breath, make a choice, drop down to your knees, right? I would even suggest that if you get too heady, drop down to your knees. Let your practice be within your body and outside of your thoughts, yeah? Take a deep inhale, push into your thumbs, your index fingers, pull up on the quads. Exhale, lower just above halfway, elbows point straight back. And then inhale, draw your heart forward, untuck the tops of the feet, lift your chest high, chin high, up dog. Exhale, curl the toes under, hips high, heels low. And that is our flow when we allow it to connect our postures one together, side to side. Wherever you are with your breath, go ahead and exhale completely. Empty, empty, empty. Take a deep, exaggerate the inhale, get full. Audible exhale, let it go. And on your inhale, glide your right leg up. Really go for length. Get as long as possible. Find the stretch. On your exhale, silently place the foot in between your palms. Rotate your back heel down onto the floor. And inhale, glide your torso and arms up. Warrior one. So find a rootedness in the legs. Notice that the right knee is coming directly over the ankle. So you can feel the weight there. If you pick your toes up and you place them back down, not a whole lot should change. Right? Notice what's happening in the back leg. The more you can pull and firm up on that back quad, the more support you have to sit into that deep front lunge. Push into the outside edge of your left foot. Pull the belly in. Again, not to, compre not to suppress, but to compress for a buoyancy and a listedness in the lungs and that upper diaphragm. And then notice what's happening in the throat, in the face. Can you soften in those muscles? And if you need to have tension, always let it be a gentle smile here. Spread the fingers wide, and if you're okay here, maybe even bring the palms to press above the head. Feel the warmth of one side of the body touching another. Take a smooth inhale to dip the hips down, to stretch the arms back a bit, and exhale gently, place both hands down, deliberately stretch your right leg back behind you, come into that lower push-up plank. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale, rediscover down dog. And then we'll flow into our left side. Inhale, left leg long. Find a stretch all along the left side body. Exhale, step the foot forward. Try to get the heel in line with the base of your palms, even if you need to walk your foot up. Rotate your back heel down onto the floor. And then inhale, arms up, torso up. More your one left side. And immediately honoring where your body lands. Right? Especially if your right side tends to be um, dominant. Left side could feel a little bit strange and you wanna perhaps force it into this shape, this idea. Check in with the body. What feedback is it giving you? Push into the outside edge of your right foot, pull up on that quad, and gently over time, you'll begin to be shifting that right hip forward so the left hip com can come back. Keep your front knee over the ankle and if you wanna test it out with the toes, you totally can by picking them up, by placing them down. We're not clenching onto the mat with our feet. And then belly drawn in. With the eyes closed, can you again visualize what we experienced in mountain in Tadasana? 
Every inhale, I get long through the ribs, all the way through the crown of my head, my fingers. Every exhale, I soften into that space. If you want to press the palms above you, I invite you to do so. Include your pinkies. Take a deep inhale, drop your hips down, stretch your arms back. And then exhale, release, both hands down. Lengthen left leg long and come through that flow. Enjoy it as you exhale and lower. Inhale, keep pushing your rib cage forward, push into your thumbs, up dog. Exhale, and you find your downward facing dog and it should feel good and sweet. We're going to move through that flow, one breath, one movement, warrior one, right side, left side. So on your own, find an inhale to stretch your right leg up, to lift it high. Exhale to deliberately place the foot forward, rotating your back heel down. It's only one inhale to find warrior one. And as soon as you begin exhaling, you're releasing the hands down and you're coming through that flow. And flowing is an opportunity, right? It's not being so um, particular in fixing. We don't fix or fidget or try to, um, or judge any of these poses as we flow through them. Instead, we really like to practice consciously embodying them. What does warrior one feel like as I inhale? How do I exit the posture? And then suddenly my yoga practice isn't about warrior one or flow or whatever other things we're gonna do. Instead, it's simply moving. Inhale, I move. And exhale, I move. And then once you're done with that warrior one on your left side, come back into downward facing dog and check it out. Always choosing to make our down dog a very conscious and strong moment. So we can make it the best down dog possible or you can always reintroduce movement. Check it out. Wherever you are, exhale. Deep, full, voluptuous inhale. Let it go, H-A. <sighs> Bend your knees very deeply. Glance forward, step, or maybe you hop to the front of your mat. Inhale into a halfway lift, flat back, firm core, weight slightly forward, please. Exhale, release, forward fold. Separate your feet about hips width distance. Again, if you need to measure, that's two fists side by side, pinkies touching big toes. Take a deep inhale, and then on your exhale, sit your hips down, bring your arms up. Chair pose. So chair pose is exactly what it sounds like. It's as though we were sitting back into a little invisible chair behind us. And in order to do so, we need to shift the weight back into our heels. So glance over your knees and make sure the toes are still facing forward. The knees aren't collapsing in or bowing out. And then rotate the pinkies in towards one another to keep that back body of the shoulders broad. We can breathe here. Soften through the jaw. Soften through the throat as you lower the hips down and back. Keep lifting the torso long so we get very tall from hip through crown of the head and very compact from hip down to heel. Take one more full inhale, sit low, reach long, and exhale, forward fold. Nod the head, yes. Shake it out, no. Let it go. And then finding a stillness. On your inhale, Hips down, stomach on thighs, chest on knees, arms outstretched in front of you, half chair. Yeah, so you can glance at me. It's like um, I were sitting into a stool and totally giving up on my upper body, right? So as we reach forward, our biceps alongside the ears, maybe the biceps lift above the ears so they're not even in our periphery. And as we shift the weight back into the heels, our knees come directly over the heels, almost making shins parallel to the floor. Keep your belly firmly on your thighs. Stay in it. Get long from tailbone all the way through middle finger. Keep your hips exactly as they are and listen carefully. On your inhale, come up into chair pose. <sighs> my thighs, my thighs, my thighs. You're doing it. Stay in it. Keep stretching the arms forward. Keep pulling the navel in to lift up through the chest. You've got it. Stay with it. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Let it go. Shake it out. Yeah, you can bend your knees. Exactly. Some of you are doing deep squats. Go for it. Let the moment go. Notice where the breath is. Notice where the heart rate is. 
And then finding a stillness on your next inhale. Come all the way up to standing nice and tall. Tadasana. Spread your fingers wide. Close the eyes. You've been here. Your body's a bit warmer. You're starting to cultivate that language, that dialogue between where your body is now and where your mind wants to be. Find your breath. Can you see it? Maybe you can taste it. Maybe it has a texture. Get really intimate with, my, with the quality of my breath so that it's not something I just leave behind on the mat. It's something I want to take with me everywhere, that awareness. Get a little bit longer from heel, edge of foot, ball of feet, all the way up through all 10 fingers. Take a smooth inhale, fill up the lungs. Exhale, begin to sit your hips down and back. Third, final, chair pose. And then once you meet that place of familiarity, where you know chair pose is being reflected in your body, notice what happened, the way we entered into it, had a really big impact on how we experienced the actual asana. And my suggestion to you is that these asanas are not just shapes that we fix ourselves in, but rather moments strung together by that beautiful inhale, that complete exhale, and a mindfulness that doesn't need judgment aside, as beside it. Take one more full body inhale, sit low, reach long. Exhale and let it go, forward fold, so beautiful. Inhale into a halfway lift. And exhale, release both hands down. Step or jump back and come through your flow. Resist gravity as you lower, full inhale and up dog. Complete exhale, and down dog. Yep. Find a good stance between your feet. All right, on your next inhale, lift your right leg up, find a stretch, and then on your exhale, shift shoulders over wrists, forehead and knee, get them to touch. Find a compression in the belly. Inhale, lift your right leg up and back, three-legged dog. Exhale, shoulders over wrists, bring your knee to the outside of that right elbow, maybe even higher. Squeeze it. Inhale, lengthen it up and back. Exhale, knee to the outside of your left elbow. Find a twist. Keep pushing evenly into both thumbs. Inhale, lift, lift, lift. Exhale, now you got it. Bring the foot silently. Use your core. Foot in between your palms. Back heel down. Inhale, arms up, warrior one. And then on an exhale, simply peel open, right arm forward, left arm back, warrior two. So depending on your... On your anatomy, you may need to separate your feet a bit wider by taking a bigger step, shifting the heels. But wherever you are, make sure that you can see a sliver of your big right toe. So the knee, the front knee is directly over the center of that heel. Back leg is long, strong, and straight. So push into the outside edge of that left foot. And then push your hips slightly forward as you lean the upper body back a fraction. So we're separating and opening up the pelvic bones. We should be able to breathe all the way down to this point. And then with the gaze soft, listen carefully. Flip your palms so they're facing either side of the room and the fingertips are facing up towards the side. And then squeeze in the shoulder blades behind you. Can you feel exactly? Can you feel a stretching of the fascia of the fingers through the center of the palm? And if you really begin to notice, can you feel that sensitivity and stretch from one palm through the shoulders, heart, shoulder, elbow, other palm, taking up space? If the eyes are closed, gently open them. Glance over the right shoulder, flip the right palm skyward. Inhale, stretch the torso forward. Exhale, sweep the arm up, 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 and then back for reverse warrior. So your left hand comes above or below your back knee. Keep sending your right knee forward so you're really finding a blooming and a blossoming open of the right side body. Keep stretching your ribs high to the sky as you simultaneously bring that knee forward. And then Lauren, can you bring the knee, um, keep the fit where it is, bring the knee more over towards the pinky? Yes, exactly. Open the throat by glancing gently up at the ceiling. You've got it. 
Take a deep inhale, draw the knee forward, stretch your fingers back. Exhale, cartwheel both hands down. Firmly root them on the floor before stepping your right leg back and coming through that flow. Full and sweet, breathing consciously. All right, keep pushing into your fingers. Some of you have your hands a little bit closed. The palms are beginning to close up. Spread your fingers wide, almost like your hands are suction cups to your mat, yeah? And then on your next breath, inhale, left leg up. Find a stretch first before exhaling, shoulders over wrists, knee to nose. Get them to touch. Inhale, lengthen it up and back. Exhale, knee to the outside of the left elbow, maybe even higher, squeeze, 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 yes. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to the outside of the right arm, get them to touch. Push into your thumbs, into your index fingers. Inhale, lift. Now with control, exhale, slowly place left foot in between palms. Back heel down. Inhale, arms up, warrior one. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back, warrior two. And get wide, right? Again, especially in this time of um, conservation and efficiency and needing to be small and tight and compact, Right, don't be afraid to take up space. So maybe as you opened into warrior two, you found taking a wider stance was more appropriate. So Karina, actually, could you possibly bring your right toes to face more forward so your back foot, so your back foot is parallel to the back of your mat? Yes. And now can you take a little bit bigger step? Yes, that's great. Awesome. Make sure you can see a sliver of that big left toe. And then push your hips slightly forward. Lean the upper body, the chest slightly back. So we find a buoyancy and an openness in that soft part of our body, right? The front side of our bodies. Flip your palms to face either side of the room like you're pushing two walls apart. Flex the fingertips up towards the sky and look and search for that radiation from one side of the body to the other. That pulse of energy that goes right through the heart. I notice if it feels stuck somewhere. Keep pushing the walls apart from you. Keep taking up space. Allow that energy to flow because it wants to. You're never stuck. Use the breath. Find your stretch. And then if the eyes are closed, gently glance past your left palm. Flip it skyward completely. And then inhale, reach the torso forward. Exhale, sweep the arm up as high as it can go before it has to stretch back. Release your right hand above or below your back knee. And then it really is a lifting through the ribs. So if you have the eyes closed, I find it helpful in visualizing what may be happening energetically in the body. As your left knee pushes forward, you're stretching that hip bone and lowest rib further apart by inflating the lung towards the sky. Find space. You've got to breathe in it. Stay with it. Take a smooth inhale. Draw your knee more forward. Fingertips high and back. Exhale, cartwheel both hands down. Silently float the left leg behind you and flow. Mm. And then wherever you are, exhale, exhale, exhale when you get there. Take a deep, full inhale, let it feel good. Exhale, let it go. And then one breath, one movement, you've got it. Inhale the right leg up. Exhale, you'll bring it forward. It's one inhale to find warrior one. A complete exhale to embody warrior two. And then it's one simple motion, reaching forward, stretching it up and back. Yeah, and then you flow. You cartwheel the hands down. And as you gain familiarity in your body, right, it's almost um, intentional in a way. You become so familiar with something that it somewhat is habitual. And then the invitation and perhaps even the challenge is to invite something deeper, a more kaleidoscopic awareness of what's possible as you spread the arms apart, 
as you open the inner thighs, as you stretch the heart towards the sky, suddenly these postures become much more than a posture or a shape. One more time, right side, left side. If you haven't tried it, I invite you, I encourage you, in fact, to close your eyes. Close the eyes and take away the visual and get more interested with the internal. So good. And then once you've completed your left side for the second time, you find downward facing dog and take a moment to discover what might be different about it from the first time. Find a way of being really empowered with the strength of the arms and your legs and your torso. Yeah, and use your breath. Don't leave your breath behind. Yeah. So good. Wherever you are, exhale, exhale, exhale. Get completely empty, please. And then invite a full, vibrant inhale from below the belly, through the ribs. It hits the heart. Exhale, let it go. <sighs> Soften the knees. Glance forward, try to hop. Go ahead and float to the front of your mat, all the way up. Yes, I don't have the audio, but those looked pretty silent and fluid. All right, feet together on an inhale, halfway lift, flat back from belly, shoulders away from the ears, and exhale, ragdoll. Get very, very heavy, let the head go. Notice if you wanna use the neck muscles um, automatically, soften sides of the jaw all the way up to the ear on your inhale hips down arms up palms press thunderbolt so thunderbolt is very similar to ukatasana or to chair pose right only now we're squeezing everything to the center line of the body so use the pressure of the knees the inner thighs perhaps even squeeze them tight sink the weight back into the heels and then Pull the belly in. Use the muscles wrapped around on either side of your spine to lift your chest up. And then as you push your palm into palm, focus on what's happening in the pinky side. Rotate the pinkies in a little bit more so you feel the warmth being captured between your hands. Take a smooth inhale, sit the hips a little lower. Exhale, float the hands to our center. Push your thumbs into your sternum. And then really find that solid contact, that one long line of energy from elbow to elbow through those forearms. Take a deep inhale, squeeze your legs together. Exhale, tilt forward. Bring your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. A little bit of a twist. So the lower you set the hips, the easier it's gonna be to get that, um, that wrap, that contact. Keep sitting your hips down and back and then push your right hip back so that the knees stay in one line. Weight is still even between the feet. And then if you've got that contact between arm and knee, you can fly away, release the right hand down and the left arm up. Maybe you want to explore buying. Just because you always do something doesn't mean it needs to happen today. And just because you've never tried it doesn't mean it's inaccessible. You've got to breathe. Stay with it. Stay in that low body position. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, slowly unwind the torso. Come right back to where we started. Right back to where we started. Thumbs into sternum. Stay with it. I totally tell you it's worth it. Inhale, press the, hip, the hips down. Lift the chest up. Exhale, opposite. Left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Squeeze your legs. Sit your hips down and back. So almost from the side, it would be like a 45-degree like a angle from hips through crown of the head. And as you push your top hand into bottom and you find that rotation, the ringing out of the spine, then you decide. Left hand down, right arm up. Spreading the fingers, inviting or exploring a bind. And if you come into it and it's like, eh, eh, not today, you back off. You do something else. Really good, Jamie. So beautiful, Jamie. Take a deep inhale, reach or press it open. 
with control right back to center you've got it stay in it squeeze your legs take a deep inhale stretch your heart up exhale dive forward let it go nod the head yes shake it out no yeah and then inhale into a halfway lift please exhale release both hands down step or jump your feet back and come through that flow yeah and why not hop the feet back you try to keep your hips high as you hop back and we'll all find downward facing dog together push into your thumbs and to your index fingers wherever you are exhale a sigh or a sound maybe even flutter the lips Take a deep, deep, full inhale. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> On your inhale, lift your right leg up. Spread or point your toes. Exhale, silently step the foot forward. Inhale, warrior one. And we'll all meet in warrior two. And then once you find warrior two, clean it up. Close the eyes. There comes a point in the practice where we don't fix or fidget or judge, we only feel. Spread your fingers wide, sit low, breathe deep. And then keeping the slow body as it is, take a smooth inhale, stretch your arms apart. Exhale, gently place the right hand down, left arm up for side angle. And I invite you to push uh, weight into that bottom hand right so as you push down into the right hand equally stretch up through those left fingertips so maybe wiggle them around or I like to clench my hands into fists sometimes right actively set energy to the tip of my being and then spread the fingers apart again push that arm into the knee to open up the hip keep pressing into the back outside edge of your foot or the edge of your back foot take a deep inhale Exhale, bicep alongside the ear. And now there should be a long line of energy from the left heel all the way through that index finger, opening up again, fanning open these ribs. And when we fan them open, it's not temporary. We're rediscovering a recommitting space in the body. Take a smooth breath here, and then bend the elbow on top of that thigh. Begin to roll your bottom hip forward, preparing for a core strengthener. So let me see. The videos I've got, yeah, you can all do this. Now lift your bottom arm up to frame the face. There we go, arm strong and straight. Roll that right shoulder forward, left shoulder open towards the sky. You've got it for three. Reach forward for two. Release, left hand down, right arm up. A little bit of a twist. So if your back heel pops up off the floor, you can drop down to the back knee yes exactly lauren you can untuck the toes wherever you are try to work that knee towards the shoulder thigh and belly closer together stretch up towards the ceiling take a deep inhale and then exhale bring the right arm to the inside of your shin behind your calf muscle and grab your ankle from the outside yeah for a little bit of a bind so um Elena, can you bring your arm straight out in front of you? To the inside, bend your elbow to the inside of your knee and then behind your calf. Yes, grab, exactly, perfect. And then grab on with both hands and then let the head go. Let the neck go. Allow your low body limbs to be so firmly rooted and strong that the forward body can soften and assist in that opening. Let your belly hang. You've got it, we are almost there. Take a deep inhale. On your exhale, begin to unwind. Left arm behind your back. Right arm bends underneath your thigh. And you grab for fingertips or clothing. Or maybe today, right, it's just the air. We're just doing this. Wherever you are though, find the grip. Remain committed to stretching open the heart. So roll that left shoulder open towards the ceiling, exactly. And breathe. 
You've got it, stay in it. Maybe tuck the chin into the chest first before glancing over the left shoulder. Yeah, so the head doesn't just hang. And stay committed for three, because we are almost there. For two, gently release, right hand down, left arm up. And this is for all my, my old fashioned yoga to the people students. Stay in the side angle. Commit, make up your mind right now. Low body is not gonna change. You're gonna take a deep inhale, stretch the arms apart. Exhale, squeeze up into warrior two. Boom. You've got it. Stay in it. You're almost there. Stay with it. Full belly inhale, stretch the arms apart. Exhale, squeeze front leg straight. If you wish, if you already know that you're pretty flexible in those hips, you can walk your back foot in a few inches. Keep the arms strong and parallel to the floor. Inhale, stretch your right fingers past your toes. Exhale, release right hand down, left arm up for triangle. And again, you have options. It depends on the kind of stretch you want. So you can bring your hand to the floor. That's not necessarily the goal. If you're going for a side body stretch, less inner thigh so much, bring your hand to your shin or maybe your, even your ankle. Stretch the arm high up towards the ceiling. And then if you can't stretch any higher, then we drop the left arm behind our back and we grab for the inner thigh. Roll the left shoulder open. Continue to breathe all of this newfound space, all of this newly freshly oxygenated blood pulsing through the body. Breathe into it. Exude in that kind of lovely feeling. Take a deep inhale, stretch your left arm high to the sky. Exhale, drop your left hand down, bring your right arm up for revolve triangle. And if it helps you or revolve pyramid, walk your back foot in again. Heel stay in one line, bringing the left arm or the right arm high towards the ceiling. And if you have it there, you can play around. Yeah, I see some of you bringing your hand to the top of your foot or maybe to the outside of your right foot that's totally available. Continue to breathe, find a power in the legs and a softness in the belly to allow for that stretch. Take a deep inhale, stretch the arm high. Exhale, both hands down to frame the front foot. Allow the body to hang. So if you're just working on um, kind of re relaxing and opening up these hamstrings, Awesome, you can keep some of the pressure into the palms. Walking the back foot in closer if necessary. Drop your left hip down, roll your right hip up and back. And then if you wanna bring prayer hands behind your back, you can. Always going for length. So chin slightly away, heart melting towards the shin. And breathe, what can you let go of? Where can gravity assist in this moment? Wherever you are, exhale. Take a deep inhale. Audible exhale, H-A. Bend your front knee. Walk your left toes back a fraction. Place both hands down on the floor. Right leg floats behind you. Come through that flow. Lower push up. Upward facing dog. Find downward facing dog and reconnect. No doubt we've done so much work on one side. It's easy to focus on that. Instead, notice where the energy wants to pulsate from one side of the body to the other. Because right? that's what we're doing in this practice. We're moving the energy through us. We're finding places that might be held or there may be some resistance. And we're allowing our breath and these very fluid motions to open up those spaces. So it's not uncommon, I would actually say it's kind of expected that there's some moment in the practice that might feel uncomfortable or might be challenging, not just physically, but mentally. And the invitation and opportunity in these moments is to come back to your breath, not simply do the best you can, because that seems a rather passive way of saying meet your expectations close enough, right? What we're really inviting you to do is create the best yoga practice you can with what you have, not thinking about what you had before 
or what you want to attain, but what's present, what's happening now. And that's the power of the practice. Wherever you are, exhale. Full, deep and voluptuous inhale. Let it go. <sighs> On your inhale, lift your left leg up. Find length and power as you exhale and step your foot forward. Back heel down. Inhale, find warrior one, let it feel good. Exhale, sweep open, warrior two, expand. And then clean it up and close your eyes. And there comes a, a point that I, I encourage you to start incorporating in your home practices as you go through these classes with us. If when you find these moments of stillness, can you bring your left hand to your heart, your right hand to your belly, and can you feel the breath there? Perhaps you can even feel the blood coursing in those pathways. This is the essence. If this part of the practice gets sacrificed, it's not yoga anymore. Every inhale from below the navel to the heart and every exhale a ringing out creating new space for that fresh blood and air to occupy. It's you. You deserve to get to know you in this practice. The eyes are closed, gently glance over the right shoulder. Extend that right arm straight behind you, make it long and strong, committed. Glance over the left shoulder, extend the left arms, and then fan the fingers apart. Take a deep inhale, sit a little bit lower, Exhale, left hand down, right arm straight up to the sky. Focus on the back leg, right? The back leg is strong. It's supporting that lunge. And as you capture weight in the front hand or in the left hand, equally stretch up through those right fingertips. Infuse it with a bit of energy. Infuse it with a bit of intention. Take a smooth inhale. Stretch the fingertips high. Exhale, bicep alongside the ear. And again, we're going for long lines of energy. So as you capture the weight into the bottom hand, as you push into the outside edge of your right foot, equally stretch through those fingertips. Take a smooth breath in. On your exhale, bend the arm, place the elbow on top of the thigh and reach and stretch. Begin to roll that bottom hip forward so you feel an opening there. And then exactly feel, extend the left arm forward. Get it nice and long, biceps strain the ears, and you got it for three. Roll that bottom shoulder forward for two. Release, right hand down, left arm straight up. If you need to walk the back foot in, you can. If you need, drop down to the back knee, untuck the back toes, wherever you are, bring that compression, that space in between your torso and thigh, narrow it. Take a smooth breath in, reach, reach, reach. Exhale, bring left arm to the inside of your knee, behind your calf, to the outside of your ankle, and then clasp on with both hands. Again, getting really familiar with your base. The legs are strong and stable. They don't need to move. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> Mine too. My baby does that too. Drop the torso down. Let the belly hang and allow gravity to feel, pull a little bit more space between the vertebra so that eventually maybe you get that shoulder, perhaps the head underneath that left knee. Take one more full breath here. On your exhale, find your bind. Bring your right arm behind your back, left arm underneath the thigh. Again, it's fingertips or clothing, or whatever you have, whatever grip you have, the goal is to get the chest open by using that grip, All right? So even if it's your inner thigh today, roll the right shoulder open towards the sky, stay in it. I can see you breathe into it for three, roll it open for two with grace and permission. Release left hand down, right arm up. You know where we're going. Make a decision right now. You can do anything if you make up your mind. Take a smooth inhale, get that back leg straight. Exhale, squeeze up into warrior two. Bam, you're there. Stay in it. Don't give it away. Take a full inhale, stretch the arms apart. 
Exhale, squeeze front leg straight. So good. You can walk your back foot in a little bit if you need. And then inhale, stretch your fingertips forward. Exhale, tilt, left hand down, right arm high to the sky. Close the eyes or soften the gaze and check in with this stretch. Find the sweet spot that is rewarding and breathe into it. So whether it's placing the hand higher or lower on your shin or wrapping the arm behind your torso and grabbing for your inner thigh, you're continuously making choices so that this is the best practice it can possibly be. Really beautiful, Chris. Take a deep inhale, reach or roll it open. Exhale, release, right hand down, left arm up. Walk your back foot in a little bit. Heel stay in one line. The right toes are maybe at a 45 degree angle if you like numbers, if you like percentages. And as you stretch the left arm high toward the ceiling, perhaps there's a bit more openness to swivel. Right hip down and forward, left hip up and back. If you want to play around with where the right hand lands, go for it. Notice though where the space is. Use your breath to nourish your stretch. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, release both hands down to frame the front foot. Relax the head or relax the neck so the head is heavy. Soften the face. And if you want to play around with the balance, you can press your hands into prayer behind the back. If you're doing that, push your fingertips into the, or the side of your hand into the spine as you lift the elbows up towards the ceiling. Wherever you are, using your full breath in these last few moments. Take a deep inhale here. And exhale, release both hands down. Soften your front knee. Step your feet back into an upper push-up plank and come through your flow. Last flow of class. Hmm. Last downward facing dog. So find a way to say goodbye to it, whether it's pedaling up the feet, lifting one leg, then the other. You've done so much beautiful work today. Take note of how it might feel different and know that that's all because of you. Never me, not the teacher, not even the sequence that you do. It's how you show up to your mat that makes any transformation possible. Take a deep, deep, deep inhale and exhale. Shift your shoulders over your wrists and then slowly lower all the way down to the floor. And you have worked incredibly hard today. Um, we're gonna do one last final pose and it's super advanced, so listen carefully. With the eyes closed, you're gonna take a deep, deep, deep inhale. Try to get really big in the ribs and the belly. Hold it, levitate up off the floor about three inches and flip over onto your back for Shavasana. Yeah, just turn over. <laughs> exactly. Give yourself a very good final Shavasana. So, Spread your limbs as wide as you want now. Close the eyes. Nod your head from side to side until it finds a really good resting point. Be faithful in small things because it is in them that your true strength lies. Mother Teresa. And face soft. Space. The sides of your neck, your throat are soft. 
fairly soft. We've moved in such deliberate, full and committed ways. Shavasana is a time to honor that space we've just created. So now when we come up against the edges or the gruff, instead of having such easy landing places to fall in our bodies, perhaps they more easily can reverberate through us. One last collective breath together. This time, if you would, even if you can't hear others, go ahead and hiss all the air out. Take a deep, deep, full inhale. Fill it up from the tips of your fingers and toes. Hold it. Exhale, H A. Slowly begin to roll over to one side of your mat, almost like you're waking up from a really good dream. Mm. And then find a way of yawning your body up so that you're sitting up on your mat. Thank you all so much for joining me this evening, this afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for choosing to make time for yourself to come to your mat. It's, uh, it's really humbling and inspiring. I have the best job. So thank you for being part of this community. Uh, Yoga to the People has always been and will continue to be as long as we're around donation-based studios. So your contributions in that way, they really do help. And if you're unable to uh, contribute by going to the website and clicking the donate button, it is equally, if not more so powerful to share it with those you love, you know, inviting friends or family or whoever um, to join in this endeavor of self exploration and self love and breath awareness is incredibly powerful. Um, so continue to share this practice in the best way that you can and we will continue to be here. Thank you all. Oh, one last thing. Um, if you're still feeling really good and in the groove, uh, you can join me. I'll be sitting in on this next session that we're doing. Uh, call, uh, it's a series of talks. They're 30 minutes long. Tonight's talk is on fear and faith in the coronavirus. So you can go right back onto our website and click the, joy, uh, the button to join us in about 20, 27 minutes. So I, I hope to see you there. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, Haven. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the Thank Dominican you. Republic. That was awesome. Thanks. Cool. Thank you so much. I haven't split that much Thank in eight inches without me. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> so good. Thank you. I'm so glad. Yeah, take your practice off the mat now. Go be, go be loving and sweet to someone. You look so pretty, B. I I was thinking the same about you. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> Actually, it looks like someone thought that I was you. What a compliment. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you, Alina. <laughs> thanks for, uh, Marika, it's so great. I, I mean, like, I feel like all the classes that I, I go on, and I've been on, I think, all of them but one, I feel like I see your name. So I don't know if it's all you. Yesterday. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Marika, did awesome. you get the message? I'm really glad to see you. What message? Um, I DM'd you. Oh, shoot. I'm going to check it now. <laughs> gonna I like just it. woke up okay. and we took a class right away. So, <laughs> What time is it for you? It's like 9.05 right now. AM. Next day for you guys. Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. Friday here. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> I missed your class yesterday. Okay. My phone died. <laughs> oh, 
I think you were there in the beginning. I think my mom was taking class. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the camera. Oh, off. I was. I was like, why is America's camera off? Okay. There you go. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for taking Chris. Thanks for taking Jamie. Oh, such a beautiful class. Um, really, this is great. We should do more of these things. <laughs> we should do more yoga. We should do. Where are you? It's so pretty. Is that your home? Me. Uh, this is a friend's, a friend of a friend's home. <laughs> we got very lucky. And it's weird because um, when he was like, yeah, you know, you can bring the kids for a little bit because we have our whole family with us. We were driving through the neighborhood and it's very like these homes were built maybe in like the 50s, 60s. And I was like, I don't know if it's going to fit us. And then we opened the door. I was like, okay. It's gonna fit us, but it's really like it's really deceiving. I feel like the people that bought this place have lived here forever, and they were like, the theme is Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's like there are um, like fans that are shapes of leaves here. It's really cool, but it's like so not what you expect from the outside. From the outside, it looks like where my grandmother lives in Kentucky. Well, the room is really beautiful. It's like such a pretty backdrop. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think took the kids out. Action. This was their playroom. <laughs> All right, we're gonna scarf down some food and see you in twenty minutes. See you. See you in the meeting. Okay, great. Bye, guys. Thank you all so much. Bye. Great to have you, Haven. Thanks.